Huge changes are on the way. So we're gonna walk through the details in this update. First, take you back over the last seven day temperature anomalies. This was well forecasted, folks. That dominating ridge of high pressure over Alaska and Greenland allowed that funnel effect and the coldest temperatures to pumble into the US. And that's exactly what happened over the last seven days is pretty much everybody in the lower 48 got impacted from that significant cold blast you know, for November standards. But going forward, heading into December, we're gonna slowly start to migrate and see the kind of the changes as that ridge is gonna start to subside, at least the beginning of the month up there in Alaska, that's gonna allow this ridge to start building underneath out west. And as that does, that's gonna slowly migrate these warmer temperatures from west to east, kind of all week long heading into next week, but we're still gonna be dealing with the effects, at least in the short term, of the colder anomalies out into our eastern part of the US with that consistent Northwest flow that's can continue to pummel down from Canada. So if you are new to the channel and like detailed weather breakdowns, hit the subscribe button and you're in. You get all my daily content on this channel and I would love to reach 225,000 followers by the end of the year and you can help me get there by subscribing to the channel and following all my daily content. And I'm pretty excited, folks. I have now launched my merch store. You can actually go find it on palpondershop.com. So head to the store. I've got literally over about 100 items within the store right now. And it's something I'm gonna be probably changing out seasonally as kind of the weather changes. But go check it out. And if you have anything, you can be certainly uh, purchase something to help support the channel. So let's take a look at the setup this morning as far as the radar goes. And here's where the rain is falling. And some of this is in the form of snow. We've got precipitation across Vancouver, back into Seattle, back into the Portland region, but in the higher elevations, 3,500, 5,000 feet up, up in the Cascades, that is all heavy snow. And they're likely to get likely two to three feet over the course of the next couple of days with this system coming in from the Pacific Northwest. Further south, we had all the heavier rains yesterday, place like in Winnie, Texas, towards Beaumont, picked up six inches of rain just in two hour time span as that warm front lifted further north now it's over portions of new orleans this morning with heavier rains for them that's shifting into portions of atlanta back into the nashville region into the knoxville region some scattered showers into charlotte but that's swinging up through portions of cincinnati into indianapolis eventually heading over to pittsburgh and then you got the northern side that's where the low pressure is coming off the texas panhandle some of that actually changed over to snow into the overnight hours as this will continue to lift up into the northeast you can see the temperature changes over the last 24 hours and look further south folks that is that warm front remember when these areas had a freeze and it rapidly changed big time that was the warm front coming out of the gulf of mexico that set the stage for the stronger thunderstorms and all the heavier rains and that's exactly what's happening today they're going to fuel the fire on these thunderstorms as this will slowly lift up to the north Back behind it, we've had that reinforcing shot of colder air. So this will eventually migrate from west to east over the next couple of days and keep the eastern half of the U.S. on the colder side. So here's the setup for tomorrow. As this system comes through, I think much of the central U.S. starts to clear out and every all the instability is gonna be out into the southeast. Gonna be pretty stormy across these regions, more likely heavy rain. These are areas that desperately need the rain. I was actually reading down here towards the portions of Louisiana, some of these areas are 40 inches below average for the year. So they desperately need the rain. They're in a significant, exceptional drought across these regions. So they've got some, some beneficial rains definitely on the table as this will continue to traverse across. Mainly the heavier ra rains will be elongated the I-10 corridor, but just been scattered showers. And then there's that snow on the north northern periphery of that low pressure center. So as this continues to move through and heading into the weekend, heading into Monday of early part of next week, there's the ridge slowly migrating, right? So we start to see the ridge continue to move and shift further off into the central US by now. 
as the colder air will continue to pummel, at least for the uh, eastern half of the U.S., but especially up here towards New England as we head into that Monday time frame. We have another significant surge of colder air following over that pretty decent snowpack there into Ontario as well as Quebec. That is going to set the stage for more snow across this region into New England going into Monday. But here's the setup for Sunday as that per consistent, persistent flow will be coming off the Southwest flow, taking advantage of those warmer, warmer anomalies as the cold front will slowly start to shift your way. The heavier rains will be following in its path. And by the time we head into that Monday timeframe, we've got the low pressure center gonna be off the Northeast coast here. Back behind it, there's the colder air, the reinforcing shot of colder air that traverses over Ontario and Quebec. That's going to set the stage for some pretty significant snows across upstate New York, getting into Vermont and New Hampshire, back into Maine. Yeah, these areas could get crushed with 12 to 18 inches of snowfall across this region with very heavy snow. And there's the overall temperature anomalies heading into that Tuesday December the 5th, right? So now you got the ridge, you got the persistent, more or less what they call zonal flow coming off the Pacific. That's a warm flow as the polar vortex starts to starts to get strong again, meaning all the colder air is gonna be pushed back up into Northern Canada, allow the warm surge underneath, and that's exactly what's gonna happen. But we're still, even by Tuesday, <laughs> even by Tuesday, we're still on the colder side, especially across uh, the New England regions and across the eastern half of the U.S. So going into that uh, Wednesday time frame on the jet stream, you can see what we're talking about, right? So look at the jet stream. This is pretty abnormal for November. It lifts all the way up into Canada, folks. That is a pretty significant lift. And underneath that, you got the southwest flow. That is the warm flow coming on off the Pacific, look at the high pressure just dominating, you know, over this region. A lot of sinking air, a lot of heat actually for, you know, December standards. And we kind of talked about this in my December outlook, how the second week of December was gonna trend on the warmer side. And this is exactly what is playing out, but you can see the buckle there, right? That's why you continue to st stay on the colder side up there towards portions of the mid-atlantic and it as well as into new england with that little bit of a dip in the overall jet stream uh up there so going into that thursday time frame yeah there is the zonal flow folks it really starts to be more evident now as you got that just persistent warm flow coming in off the pacific and the all the drier air that comes in from the southwest flow there the only cooler anomalies in town now will be up there towards New England where all the snow has fallen recently. So you just got these reinforcing shots of colder air going over that snowpack, keeping those areas on the colder side as the warm air continues to moderate and shift further off into the east. So here's the setup by Thursday as far as the temperatures with that buckle and the overall jet stream yeah, those are 60s and 70s left in out of Texas and Oklahoma. Even the 60s for highs reach South Dakota, folks. That is some pretty significant warm stuff for December as the uh, as the warm surge is going to be real heading into uh, next week and also pretty dry as well. So underneath that ridge of high pressure, you're still going to be on the drier side heading into this is next Friday. This would be December the 8th time frame. As again, we have the little bit of a dip further north up here in New England. They're going to get the snow on Monday. They got another reinforcing shot of colder air coming in and more snow across these same regions that will likely get the snow on the your Monday time frame. But yes, going by Friday, everybody eventually is going to be going to be locked under this dome, this ridge of high pressure that will be slowly migrating from west to east. So by the time you head you head into this time next Friday, even the east coast is going to be start trending on the warmer side as much of the milder December air will be taking over pretty much the lower 48. 
heading into the following week let's look at about the ninth and tenth time frame because we are going to be looking at another pretty significant low pressure center going to be diving in off the west coast and this is actually some welcome beneficial rains coming in for places like california places like into you know going into uh, arizona region back into new mexico this is your el nino starting to take shape right got the more active sub uh, southern branch of the jet stream dipping down and this is what you would typically see in a more el nino type setup and that's exactly what's going to start playing out further south into these regions as we head into that ninth and tenth time frame there's a satellite picture so we could be picking up some definitely beneficial rains across california parts of course portions of nevada by then into utah heading into arizona of course the higher elevations will likely be transferring over to snow and this will eventually shift over into new mexico likely back into even maybe west texas where they've been actually missing out on the rain rain opportunity so looking at it on the surface map this is how it would look like beneficial rains scattered rains underneath that low pressure center across the four corners regions the low would be pretty far south just uh, down here towards southern portions of california and this will be migrating shifting over into new mexico and then and then eventually head over into west texas so these areas have actually been really dry as of late so this would be a significant change what they've actually seen across this region with some definitely beneficial precipitation you know by then but it's still going to be on the milder side folks so yes if you're on the cooler side now prepare for a definitely warm up for you know it's not hot by any nature but you know any day of the week 73 degrees is like a perfect day there in dallas it's just on the warmer side for for december standards but definitely some warmer temperatures when you got highs in the 50s for illinois back into ohio for and you're talking like you know december 9th december 10th time frame that is definitely on the warmer side and that's exactly what's likely going to be playing out as we get into next week so guys i appreciate you guys uh, following do like this video definitely hit the subscribe button and catch me next update why i protect you before and after the storm